Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Peter here. Now we've had a lot of response about our little pump stations as you can see behind me here and about how we set up the manifolds. So what I thought is that um, we're getting very close to install we have got to install the manifold here at the pump house at the machinery shed. So what I thought we would do is then just put um, a little video together just showing exactly what we're doing and um, trial and errors from other pump stations that we've already had in place. And, um, and I'm trying something new at this one here. So um, basically what we're going to be doing is looking at some poly pipe and um, mainly because I've got a, a lot of it in the, um, in the shed. And just bits and pieces, you know, maybe three or four hundred mil, just offcuts that we've just sort of saved. And so, what I thought I would do is is try that because of mainly the vibration. And because um, we're running this one on here, we've decided to run a two forty um, pump pressure switch pump, and um, for all the irrigation and distribution of water from this end. All right. So what we'll do is we'll turn this camera around, and I'll see you soon. All right, so here we are just looking inside the uh, little um, pump house here. And so what I've got here is basically, as you can see, two taps. One each, or each tap representing um, our tanks. So tank one and tank two, basically, is the way that um, we can set that up there. And so depending on volume of water and things like that in each tank, um, at least that way what we can do is then choose which way that we want to um, distribute our water. Alright, so basically what I've then got set up, and I'll, and I'll show you a few things on the outside that I've sort of changed on this, because what I can do is actually blend both tanks and even out. So if I'm using one and let's say something happens and um, and I've completely drained it. Well, basically what I can do is I can now balance those tanks out. And I've got a couple of little things on the outside that, um, that I'll show you about that. Now, the other thing that we need to put in is a 240 volt um, pressure switch pump. Now I had a look online and, 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 and sort of try to work out what was the best. And the pump that I've got in the house you know, um, is an Onga, and I know that cost me quite a few dollars. And so what I was thinking is that this pump's not going to be really used all that much. And I found this little, what is it, an Ozito pump from the, the warehouse, uh, Bunnings Warehouse um, hardware store, and it was cheap. You know, so I, I sort of figure that depending on how I need to change this, you know, if this, if this, if this, this, fails within a year or two years um, you know I'm going to need probably about six or seven of those little pumps to make the value of 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 the onga pump so not the best quality well I, I don't know yet but um, I've got a few of the submersible ones that I, I use just to drag out water and that's sort of been going all right so anyway I thought I'd just give it a crack and um, so as you can see here you know, as a bit of a rundown, you've got your infill here, basically for priming. You've got a drain at the bottom, and then you've got your inlet coming in and your outlet going through based on the pressure switch. Um, it's a 240 volt system. Now, I'm not gonna have this up and running today, but I just wanted to focus on the manifold itself. And I've got, as you can see, I've got, um, I've got to hook up, I've got to get the Sparky out here to hook up some um, GPOs and things like that. Um, they'll be the external ones. So yeah, we'll, we'll get a few things squared away in the next coming weeks. But I thought I'd just have this opportunity just to get this manifold set up. So basically the cruts of it is, is that like I was saying before, you've got two inlets. So these lines here go to each of the tanks um, and it will come through and then down. So that'll come down into the inlet of the pump. So that, that's sort of where I am at the moment. So what I'll do is I'll get that set up and then I can start looking at the manifold and, uh, and then we can go from there. All right, I'll, um, I'll see you soon. Okay, so as you can see, I've got now my, um, 
line into the pump from our two water tanks. Now, one of the reasons why I've decided to do poly pipe rather than a solid um, sort of glue and fix sort of scenario under um, PVC pressure pipe is to the vibration. And what I'm a little bit worried about is the vibration coming from the pump itself sending it through and, and, and getting all the water transferred around. So I, I thought I'd just give this this sort of system a crack. Um, very easy and very modular. So as you can see here, just as an example, you know, you can set up some T's and joiners, and then you've got some poly connectors here. You got elbows. I mean, there's a lot going on that you can sort of set up uh, for your irrigation. Um, so that's one of the reasons why and then this is all set up in um, inch uh, which is 20 25 mil so um, Basically what I wanted to do was just sort of see How this all comes together and I've just got things pinned in no, nothing secure at the moment I just wanted to look at some heights and um, and then go from there All right, so basically what I've got to do now is now set up the actual manifold it's just going to be sitting along this timber here, and um, and once I've got that in place, we'll have a bit of a, a yarn about that one. Okay, I'll see you soon. All right, so here we go. We've got the now I've built the manifold and got that on, and as you can see here, I've got one, two, three, four, and five. So I've got five outlets. Now I don't know. Basically, what I wanted to do was have a reserve. So what I know at the moment is that this one here, as an example, is going to have water sent into the machinery shed. And this one here, um, as an example, um, is going to be a hose um, just outside the machinery shed. Now, I do know that I'm going to have one. I want to experiment with... A fire suppression on top of the roof so that would be one here and I've just got that capped off I've got another one here and another one there so I can then add as things as things pop up um, I go oh geez I wouldn't I need water for that or whatever it may be then I've got the opportunity rather than taking everything apart and re basically rebuilding I can just have it capped and at any time I can put in a ball valve and then we're ready to rock and roll. So at the moment, what I like I said before, what I do know is I know that these two are going to be used, and that's what I've got set up. And so basically what I've got here is, and this again, these are all just parts that I had laying around. I haven't done a Teflon tape on these, um, I just wanna make sure that we're ready to, to go when we are. Um, but as you can see, between all the joints, you use Teflon tape, um, and I do a baker's dozen of 13, and then just make sure that everything's nice and tight with an adjustable spanner, and then that will ensure that you won't have any um, any leaks. So, and then, then what will end up happening there is that they'll just go straight through to the floor, into the ground, and then back out. So, um, so that's basically the manifold setup. Now, for those who haven't used this poly pipe before, super, super sort of easy stuff. So basically what you've got is your pipe, your poly pipe here, runs like so, with the, the black washer ring up into the fitting. And then basically what you've got is you've got this, this cap, which is a compression fitting, which then seals on those blue little um, feet there keep the pipe nice and tight and then that's like that's your seal and then that just sits up in in the fitting like so so as you can see like this is another old one that i've had lying around um, so i thought let's get a few things squared away and um and use what we've got so what i'll do is I'm pretty motivated now. <laughs> I'll get the Sparky out this week, and um, and we'll get that GPO 
in there squared away. And then we've also got another GPO to install inside the machinery shed. But basically, you know, what we're looking at is we're now pretty much ready to rock and roll. Um, I do have a feed already here, which is coming in through the floor and, in, and from the ground. What I might do is um, adjust that to suit this first one here, because that runs back into um, the machinery shed itself. So that's all pretty much ready to go. Um, and I'll just tee that one into that. And then I've got to work out what I'm going to do about the, a little bit more of a permanent, I mean, that's pretty tight, but I'd like to see a little bit more of a permanent sort of fixture rather than just having it, um, you know, screwed up just loose. That was just more for measurements and things like that. But yeah, look, and I think that now that we've got everything's on poly pipe and unlike when you're using solid PVC, you have to put joins in, you know, everywhere. So let's say, if, as an example, let's say I have a problem with this pump. I can just unscrew that fitting there. I unscrew that fitting there and then I can take the pump away. So everything really is modular. Um, and I think that the only thing that we really need to worry about when it comes to doing a pressure test and leaks and things like that is over summer when we have the O-rings in there get warm and we just need might need to give them a little bit of a nip um, just to get the, the, the tight fitting on those or basically make it watertight again. So there you go. I thought there's the, um, the manifold itself all just sitting up into the pump house. See if I can come out a bit. Yep, like so. And then these are the two tanks. Now what I'll do is I'll quickly show you um, what I've got on the outside as a part of balancing, like I mentioned at the start of the video. And, um, and I can show you what that is. So we go from there. So just before I, I set that up, we just need to make sure that these are off. And then obviously once you've got your own manifold set up, you'll I'll have everything labeled, you know, just so that anybody can come up here at any time and turn things on. All right, I'll just jump behind the, um, the pump house. So I'll see you soon. All right, so we're just behind the pump house here. And um, so basically what we've got, what I wanted to show you was when we need to balance tanks. So what we would make sure is that the the inlets going to the manifold are turned off. And then what I've got here is a balancer. So what I can do is I can turn this tap, which will then regulate um, the flow between tank, oh, here we go, tank two and tank one. So like I was saying before, if there's an emergency or if I've left something on or whatever it may be, then at least that way, and I've drained a tank, and you know, obviously rain's a big thing at the moment here in Victoria. We've got very little of it. We got a bit of a sprinkling last night, which was great. But what we've got is, so going back, so if I've got one tank empty and one's full, I can then come in here, I can turn that ball valve, and I can balance both these rainwater tanks out. Now I've only done that in inch, because time is not an issue for me. I can just turn it on and let it balance overnight. Um, but like I was saying before, what we need to make sure though, is that the, the inlet feeds here are off. So the water's not actually coming through the system um, and it's just balancing. So that's, I thought would be a handy little process, um, which I haven't got on other on other little systems. But anyway, we'll give that a crack and, and then we'll see how it pans out from there. All right, so for all about setting up your manifold in your pump house station for your irrigation, like and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.